Very similar to the corporate sector, higher education IT is masculine. Um, it's a masculine culture and women work in that masculine culture. And even today, in 2013, because of that, you know, gender really does matter. But some of the, the findings of differences between the demographic findings of differences between the population was that um, women CIOs are less likely to have children, and they're also less likely to make as much money as um, their male counterparts. So I have bad news, and I have good news. <laughs> I'll give you the bad news first. The bad news is that the corporatization of higher education is really affecting our workforce, and it's affecting the working norms of um, our organizations. What corporatization really means for institutions is we're becoming more driven to just produce, 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 and we're connected to that bottom line, which often, again, leads back to work norms that um, mean we're on 24-7 and we can't get away from work. And if we can never get away from work, um, it mean, it, that has implications for choices that women make. And not every woman is going to make um, a choice because uh, gender norms are still strong in 2013 and there are still commitments outside of work. They may not um, commit to becoming um, an IT leader. Um, they may see that the sacrifice is too great, but there is good news. I think the fabulous thing about working in higher education IT today is that IT is, is ubiquitous, and um, it plays such a major part in all of our lives. Because of that, we have opportunities today to change higher education like no other part of the academy. IT can be so strategic and so influential in what the future of education looks like. And if we embrace that, fabulous news. You know, terrific things ahead for us. So the first piece of advice I would give to women who are looking to become CIO is to find mentors along your career pathway. They don't need to be formal mentors and they don't all need to be the same kind of mentors. In fact, having different type of mentors who can give you um, this, you know, help you with the skills that you need, help you with finding the type of projects that will put you in the spotlight and giving you exposure. Those are all types of mentorship that are really important along your way. So seek them out. They're not, they're not always gonna seek you out. You need to find people who will help you um, along that pathway. Um, and we don't work in isolation, we work in community. And so building that community, building your network, and finding and utilizing the mentors that are readily available in this community is very, very important. Um, the second piece of advice I would give to women is that um, to either find or build on their own a peer mentoring network. Um, invaluable um, in a career. Having peers that are working with you and struggling with the same things in their careers, in their institutions, um, can just be a really helpful sounding board um, in a career lifetime. Make sure that you have a peer network that you can really rely on. The final piece of advice I would give to women is to be part of the cultural change in their organizations. Don't let the organizational culture that currently exists be what it is. Don't be satisfied with the status quo because we're the only people who can change our organizations. So if you're not committed to understanding the culture and changing the culture, then we can't get to the levels of proportionality we might like to see. So um, again, you know, that mission of higher education is really important. And if we dive in and say we really want to change what the future looks like for tomorrow, um, then I, th I think we have lots of opportunities to make higher education IT a wonderful place to work. Mm -hmm.